الحمد لله وكفاه السلام على عباده الذين اصطفى اما بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والذين جاهدوا فينا لنهدينهم سبلنا سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم Conventional wisdom is that we hold those things close to us that are meaningful to us, that are useful to us. For example, you may invest in a new cell phone as long as that cell phone is there to fulfill its purpose. You're able to make calls, you're able to communicate with other people. You will take care of it, you will charge it, you will make sure that It has a cover. It has value to you. Now imagine something happens and your cell phone is dead. It cannot be revived. Now physically, chemically, it's exactly the same cell phone as before. But now the value of that cell phone in your eyes diminishes. So much so that it's not in your pocket anymore. And more often than not, that you will just throw it away. You will trash it. It's something that was so useful to you, so meaningful to you, so close to your heart. We literally put it in our pockets. Right? Now, all of that is gone. You throw it. Right? So this is how people act. Things that are useful, that are fulfilling their purpose, we hold them dear. Things that lose their purpose, that are not useful to us anymore. They're useless, we throw them away. Today, you know, Hafiz Sahib read this ayah not once but twice. أَفَحَسِبْتُمْ أَنَّ مَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ عَبَثًا That do they really think that they have been created without purpose in Abath? Right? You know, so this is like, like a very big question mark that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks insaniyat and humanity. Do you really think that you have been created without purpose? That there's no meaning in life. Right? In philosophy, they call it nihilism, right? That there's nothing there. I'm just, you know, I'm just uh, been created out of chance in this vast universe. There's no purpose in life. There's no maqsad in life. There's no meaning in life. And I'll just end up dying. And people who have that kind of mentality, you know, they, le- they lead a very depressive life. It's a very life that is full of anxiety. life that is full of depression, and more often than not, they end up taking away their life. If you have read, you know, people in Japan, for example, a lot of times what they do is commit mass suicide. They have lost meaning in their life. They're, these are young people we're talking about. They're actually accomplished more often than not. <coughs> But there's nothing to look forward to in their lives. And so they make these pacts with each other, online usually, right? And... They decide on a day they will go into some jungle, some forest, somewhere else, and they will kill them. Allah Ta'ala poses this question. You really think that you have been created in vain? I'm reminded of a story of, you know, a pious person, Bahlul Dana, Rahmatullah Ta'ala, in the time of the Caliph Harun Rashid. And this person was, you know, a madzub. A madzub is a person who's really living in a different plane of existence and very much unaware of what's going on and absorbed in the muhabbat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jazd, madzub. And so one day he's walking on the sand and he comes across a young child, you know, seven, eight years old, very young child. And he sees that he feels sad. And he saw that there were some other children playing next to him. So he naturally assumed, as any one of us would assume, that the other children are not allowing this, this child to play with. So he said, are you sad that the other kids are not letting you play? Don't worry, I'll talk to them. They should include you. Right? You should play with them. And, you know, he looks up to him, this young child, up to this grown man, and he says, 
you know, exactly this ayah. Do you think that Allah Ta'ala has created me in vain for pleasure seeking, for enjoyment, for entertainment? And Bahlul Dana Rahmatullah, he's shocked that this young child, I mean, subhanAllah, just do a small comparison. A young child, seven, eight years old, knows his maqsir. And today people, well in their 20s, sometimes in their 30s, huh, still want to hang on to their adolescence and hmm, chilling out and hanging out. Yeah. It's very easy. So he turns to this kid and, you know, he says that, you know, mashallah, you are, you know, it seems like you're full of wisdom. Hmm? It seems like you are full of wisdom. Why don't you give me some nasir? Alhamdulillah. You know, this is the tariq of our elders that didn't, you know, they didn't have ego. Oh, this, why should I ask this young child? Huh? It doesn't know anything. No, it's like, mashallah, hmm? tell me, huh? tell me, give me some nasiha. And so he replied in poetic verses in Arabi, the, the translation of which is that, you know, that, that I am on this long journey and I don't have any tosha, meaning I don't have any saman, I don't have anything with me to take on this long journey. So I am worried of what will happen to me when I reach my destination. Really he's talking about life, that I have nothing, I've done nothing in my life, so I'm worried about what my akhara is going to look like. And Bahlul Dana Rahmatullah started crying, weeping. They were so young. It's like, why do you act this way? Why do you feel this? You know, you're ma'asum, right? Till you hit puberty, you know. They're not mukallif. Right? They're ma'asum. So why are you worried like this? If somebody like me who has spent a lifetime, we feel this way that I've wasted my life and really haven't done what I'm supposed to do. Then it makes more sense. But you, but you are though. Why, why do you feel like this? And you know, so Hannah, look at his answer. He says that, you know, Sheikh, when I am at home, I see my mother that whenever she wants to cook, she lights the fire. And you know, they didn't have gas back then. So, you know, they would put wood and they would put the, you know, burn the wood. It says that whenever she, she tries to light the fire, she starts with the small, smaller twigs and branches and whatnot before she puts in the big log so the fire catches on. And I'm afraid that on the Day of Judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to light the fire of Jahannam of hell. And I'm afraid that Allah ta'ala will choose to put the youngsters in first so the fire wheel catches on before he puts in the adults. And, you know, Bahlul Dana, he heard this and, you know, he went into the state of wajad and hal and he lost his consciousness. And when he woke up again, you know, the child was gone. It's very ajeeb. You know, when you hear stories and our tradition is repleted with stories like this, you know, like Allah, what kind of amazing people, you know, what kind of tarbiyat, what kind of parents, you know, you think the whole thing. No, that subhanAllah, this is their state of being, hal. This is their fikr. They're not fikr about video games of shooting people and like low blocks and, you know, none of that. It's, it's a very different state of existence. And so we have to realize, Allah Ta'ala asks us this question, where do we find our meaning? And we still haven't figured that out. It's very ajeeb. MashaAllah, dariyan ho chuki hain, lambe me, or abhi still we don't know what's going on with our life. It's a very sad and tragic existence. Who knows how long we have on this earth? We have to understand that. And how do we find that? The, the answer is in the Quran itself. You know, this being a Muslim means somebody who submits and surrenders themselves to Allah. Ta'ala. Usually what do we do? We surrender ourselves and submit ourselves to other people. Right? Whenever we are following, we have to this fashion to follow and this influencer to follow and this sports personality to follow and this movie star to follow. And, you know, we are submitting and surrendering to other insan. 
And when we submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah ta'ala gives us this hurriya, this freedom to really like raise ourselves and not to worry about any of like what other people think and feel about us. Because you only care about one. That care about one just frees from all other cares. Varna the Haru's Kecha, you know, I have this to wear and you know my boss is going to look at me and other people are going to look at me. I have to impress this person, I have to impress this person, I have to impress this body <coughs> zindagi is just a waste in trying to impress others. And they can't even benefit us. They don't really care. It's just us, we are stuck in this servitude, in chains of slavery in our minds. That's the worst kind of slavery. You know, I was just thinking for some reason as a Bilal Allah came in my mind, Sayyidina Bilal. Our master Bilal, his body was chained. Allah Ta'ala had freed his heart and soul. Only that heart can say ahad, 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 even when facing torture. And today our bodies are free, huh? Freedom and liberty for all. But it's it's like our minds are chained. It's so deep. Just following with the flow, just, you know, it's a very ajeeb kind of existence. Honestly, I mean, I don't understand it. And so we have to take this month of Ramadan and we have to go towards the nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Surah Nur was also, uh, today, very beautiful ayats were read. Allahu nur samawati wa And this, in darkness, you can find the light. This is the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the ayah says that Allah ta'ala will guide to his light whomever he wants. Whenever you have ayahs like that, right away it's dua. Allah ta'ala guide me towards your light. The heart that is enlightened with the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine, imagine what kind of heart would that be. And following this ayahs, you know, it's the same thing, you know. Who are true men? Very relevant ayahs to us. Therein is our maqsad. Maqsad is zindagi Allah ki bandagi. Maqsad is hayat Allah ki yaad. And the purpose of our life is to surrender ourselves to Allah, submit ourselves. And the purpose of our existence is to be able to remember Allah Ta'ala at all times. We have a few acts of ibadah here and there, but it's like the true submission is not there. If we can't control our eyes and gaze, if we can't submit our eyes, it means the submission is not complete. If we can't control our tongues, it means the submission is not complete. Can't control what goes in our ears, the submission is not complete. You just look at every uzf, every organ of your body. If it hasn't surrendered, submitted to Allah's will, the submission is not complete. But why stop there? Look at the button as well. If my heart desires or has love for anyone, you know, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it means the heart has not submitted. If my nafs is looking for anything but Allah ta'ala, it means the nafs has not submitted. Really, you have that, that is pure submission. Nafs mutma'inna is pure nafs that has completely devoted itself to Allah ta'ala. It doesn't mean that you stop doing what you're doing. Nobody's stopping you from attending your college, you know. Please attend your schools and actually get good grades for once. Right? You know, do your jobs, get your do your business, whatever you're doing. But be attached to the remembrance of Allah. Be attached to your maqsid at all times. The true men, true people are those I do not get distracted by their trade and commerce from the remembrance of Allah. Today we can't remember Allah. You must love again. It's a big musiba. We cannot remember Allah. Remember people around us, huh? Better, better, huh? Always thinking about, you know, what I'm going to do tomorrow in terms of my job and business and this and this and Thinking about, you know, I wonder what Ami has cooked a biryani. You know, does the biryani have boti in it or chicken or... Oh, 
all those thoughts one after the other but allah ke bare mein socha nahi jata ye ji baat jiski mohabbat hai uske bare mein socha nahi jata you know that we claim that we love allah that we can think of allah we can remember allah the sign of iman wal ladina amanu shaddu hubba billah there is no ashad in that there is no hub and there is no ashad in it so we take this month of ramadan my dear brothers my sons as an opportunity to reconnect to allah and to remind ourselves right of our resolution being resolute in our commitment to allah taala okay it's not just not eating not drinking and iftari and so no it's like we allah i will burden my nafs and i will make it submit to you and allah change my day and nights and allah show to you that only you matter to me okay so this is our we commitment this is a you know realization right this is an awareness a reawakening of why we are here what are we here to do Okay, and then inshallah, attaching ourselves. You now we start with dua to Allah Taala. May Allah Taala make it easy. Amin ya Rabbi Alamin. Wa asbi dawana anil hamdulillah.